find the volume of the solid region bounded above by the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2, and bounded below by the cone, z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared using cylindrical coordinates. Sketch the solid d in R3 and sketch its projection into the xy plane. So we'll start here. We're going to sketch our solid region d in three dimensions. And we already know from the question here that it's bounded above by this sphere, and it's bounded below by the cone. So we'll have our z-axis, x-axis, and y-axis. So we have that this region is bounded below by a cone, so I'm going to draw this in two dimensions first. So we have this cone-shaped region and then it's bounded above by a sphere. So here we have our solid region D. And so we're looking for the volume of this solid region here. So again, bounded below by this cone, Z is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared, and it's bounded above by the sphere. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is equal to We can even add a little square root of 2 here on our z-axis. So using this again, we know that we want to use cylindrical coordinates to find the volume here. So we can make a note of our z-bounds. Looking at our three-dimensional sketch, we can see that z is going to be greater than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and less than or equal to our sphere here. So we'll need to rewrite our sphere in terms of z. So solving for z, we have z squared is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared. And going ahead and taking the square root of both sides, we're left with z is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared. And then notice here, we're thinking just about our the upper hemisphere of the sphere, so we don't need to consider both positive and negative. We're only going to consider the positive root. So we can say that z is less than or equal to the square root of 2 minus, I'm factoring that negative out, x squared plus y squared. And since we know x and y are going to be in terms of polar coordinates, we can recall here that r squared is x squared plus y squared, our radial length from polar coordinates. So this is going to be equal to the square root of r squared, or z is less than or equal to the square root of r squared, which is less than or equal to the square root of 2 minus r squared. And then noticing on our left-hand side here, we have the square and the square root. We'll undo the effects of each other, or cancel each other out, leaving us with r. So here are the z bounds for our triple integral. So now from here, we want to go ahead and sketch the projection of our solid into the xy plane. So we're sketching that two-dimensional region r in r squared. And let's actually, we'll take a step back here. Remember that our projection is the shadow that is cast by our solid into the xy plane. So we have an idea of its shape, but as always, we never want to trust our sketch here. We should always go ahead and find the exact value. So when we go ahead now and sketch our two-dimensional region, we want to keep in mind that z is equal to 0 in the xy plane. So we'll go ahead and we'll equate the surfaces and simplify. So we know from the cone that we have the z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and that's going to be equal to, from the sphere, the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared. And we'll square both sides here to remove those radicals, leaving us with x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared. Bring all of our terms to one side. We're going to be left with 2x squared plus 
2 y squared, so we can even go ahead here and let's factor. We'll factor that 2 out in front. So I'll have 2 multiplied by x squared plus y squared, and that's equal to 2. And last but not least, dividing both sides by 2 here, we are left with the equation of a circle. Right? x squared plus y squared equals 1. So we recognize this as a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. So that's our two-dimensional region of integration here. And we'll start, we'll sketch ourselves. So here's our, our circular region in two dimensions. And adding our axes, here's y and x. And again, we know we have a radial length of 1 centered at the origin. So looking at this, we can see the bounds on R. The smallest radius would be 0, extending to 1. So we can say that R is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. And since we have our complete circle here, we know that theta will be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And we have everything that we need to get started now. We have the z bounds from three dimensions. We have the r and theta bounds from our two-dimensional projection. So let's go ahead and set up the triple integral. So this is the volume of our solid region D. And that's our triple integral here over d. You know our integrand is 1, our differential is dv. So we have theta as our outer bounds, that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Our middle integral is our radius, so that's 0 to 1. The inner integral here is z from r to the square root of 2 minus r squared. And then the differential in cylindrical coordinates is r, dz, dr, d theta. And we're ready to start integrating. So we'll evaluate that inner integral. And we'll keep in mind that our inner, since our inner integral here is dz, that our radius and theta are going to be treated like constants. And so I'm going to leave that the r of our integrand out of this integral with respect to z. And that's the integral from r to the square root of r minus r squared, keeping the r on the outside, dz. And we're ready to integrate. This is just a constant integral r times z from r to the square root of 2 minus r squared, which leaves us with r multiplied by the square root of 2 minus r squared minus r. And then simplifying before we go ahead. Well, actually, we can just leave it like this. This is fine. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and let's evaluate the middle integral. And again, taking a peek back at our original volume integral here, we see that our middle integral is r, so in this case, theta is going to be treated like a constant. And we don't have any thetas in our integrand yet, so we're all set to go. So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of r multiplied by the square root of 2 minus r squared minus r dr. And let's go ahead now, we'll distribute this r through to both terms, and we'll treat this as two integrals. So I have the integral from 0 to 1 of r times the square root of 2 minus r squared minus r squared. So then just looking at this integral here, we can see this first one is going to need u substitution. But the second part here can just be done with a general antiderivative. So I'm going to separate this out so we have minus the integral from 0 to 1 r squared dr, I'm just switching the order, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 2 minus r squared r dr. 
So setting up the u substitution for our second integral here. We'll go ahead and we'll let u be 2 minus r squared. So du dr leaves us with minus 2r. And then solving for r for our substitution, we are left with a minus du all over 2r is equal to dr. So these are the substitution values. And I'm going to go ahead and change the bounds as well. So this way we can forget about r with our second integral. So we have that u of 0 is going to leave us with 2 minus 0, which is just 2. And then u of 1 is 2 minus 1 squared is 1, leaving us with 1. So when we write this in interval notation, we notice that it's backwards. We have the interval from 1 to 2. So this is a contradiction. We always want these smallest values first, but this is a quick fix with the order of integration property. All right, so we'll keep that in mind. So when we go ahead here and start rewriting with this first integral, that's just, again, a general antiderivative. So that's going to be minus r cubed divided by 3 from 0 to 1. And now with our second integral here, we'll apply the substitution. This is going to be the integral now from 2 to 1 of the square root of u r multiplied by a minus du over 2r. And so we can see that our r's will cancel each other out. So again, with this first integral, we're ready to go right ahead and evaluate here. That's going to leave us with minus 1 third minus 0. So we have negative 1 third left over there. With our second integral, we're still continuing with our substitution here and pulling that negative 1 half out to the front. And that's the integral from 2 to 1 of the square root of u du. And now we're ready to go ahead and we'll apply that order of integration property to simplify or to flip our bounds. So I have negative one-third minus a minus one-half multiplied by the integral now from one to two of u to the one-half du. And we're ready to integrate. So we see the negative and the negative will create that positive value, leaving us with this negative one-third plus one-half multiplied by u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, so we multiply by its reciprocal, 2 thirds, and we're ready to evaluate from 1 to 2. So these 2's conveniently cancel, and we have negative 1 third plus 1 third, and we'll just for good practice here, we'll go ahead and rewrite this as uh, the square root of u cubed. You could also switch the order, we could do u cubed uh, and then take the square root. I like to do the square root first. We have smaller numbers. And evaluating, I have negative one-third plus one-third. And this is multiplied by the square root of two cubed minus the square root of one cubed, which leaves us with negative one-third plus one-third multiplied by two times the square root of two minus one. And then just to make this look a little bit nicer here and combine up like terms, I'll distribute this one-third through to both terms, leaving us with negative one-third plus two times the square root of two over three minus one-third. And notice here we have the same denominator here, so we can just rewrite this as um, combining those terms. We'll have a negative two plus two times the square root of two, and that's all over three. And whether you leave it like this or you uh, factor a negative out, that's entirely up to you. At this point, it's aesthetics. So I'm going to do 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1 to make it look really cute. So there we have it. And we're ready for our favorite part, the last integral. We're going to evaluate the outer integral. And we have the integral with respect to theta. So it's from 0 to 2 pi of 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1 all over 3 d theta. And this is just a constant, so we are left with the uh, antiderivative 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1 over 3 
times theta from 0 to 2 pi. We need just a little more room. I have 2 times e square root of 2 minus 1 over 3 from 2 pi or 2 pi minus 0, leaving us with that beautiful final answer 4 pi multiplied by the square root of 2 minus 1 all over 3. And don't forget, we're looking for the, the volume of our solid region here. So this would be cubic units or units cubed. And that is our, our final answer for the vol volume of the ice cream cone.